In this module, we are going to look at the relationship between this dominant strategy implementability and dominant strategy incentive compatibility. So remember that we were discussing the indirect mechanisms and direct mechanisms. So if, we, if you can implement a social choice function using an indirect mechanism, we call that uh, social choice function dominant strategy uh, implementable. And if the direct mechanism is itself uh, implementable, then we call it dominant strategy incentive compatible. Now, uh, we have hinted at, uh, at a result which uh, actually shows some sort of a similarity or equivalence between these two things and that result is known as the revelation principle and here we are going to define the revelation principle for dominant strategy implementable social choice functions and later we will see that we can actually look at a different version of this uh, revelation principle uh, for some other implementability as well. So what does this mean? It says that if there exists an indirect mechanism, remember those indirect mechanism were all those message spaces, um, a m1 to mn, comma g, so this message space and the corresponding decision rule that implements f in dominant strategies, then f is DSIC. So you can as well find a direct mechanism to implement that uh, social choice function. So the, uh, the uh, implication of this result is that we can, without loss of generality, focus only on DSIC mechanisms. So the uh, proof is fairly simple. You just have to do a very careful substitution. So uh, it is just saying that if you have an indirect mechanism, so we start from that, we just write down the, uh, uh, the, the definition of uh, dominant strategy implementability. So let's say uh, this social choice function is implemented by this uh, indirect mechanism. Then there must exist, according to the definition itself, there must exist some strategies, SI, uh, which maps this theta is to MI, such that for all players in N and for all M minus I tildes and MI uh, prime and theta I, this inequality should get satisfied. This is by the definition of um, uh, implementability. This, this is the by definition of uh, dominant strategy implementability. Now, uh, so this is this was the condition one, and the second condition was that if everybody is picking their SIs accordingly, because this is a uh, there exists such kind of strategies for all these players. Uh, in that strategy profile, the outcome will be the same as the social choice outcome. So this is this is the second condition. Now we'll be using this carefully. Now um, we know so this uh, equation one is going to hold for all m i prime and m minus i tilde. So we are going to uh, pick a very specific kind of uh, messages. So the first message m i prime is nothing but s i theta i prime. So you pick an arbitrary theta i prime for player i and apply the same strategy SI. The SI function is already given. You apply that, you get some message MI prime. Similarly, you apply the same thing for all the other players for their corresponding theta I tildes. So, and theta minus I tilde is also arbitrary. And for a, so this is essentially a tuple, uh, I mean, um, uh, a vector of all the strategies for all these players at their respective uh, theta I tildes, theta J tildes. And uh, we are just using the shorthand to uh, say that this is the message space chosen by the messages chosen by the other players. Of course, uh, because this is going to get satisfied, this one is going to get satisfied for all m i uh, prime and m minus i tilde. So therefore, even if you pick this arbitrary theta i prime and theta minus i tilde and apply those strategies on them, uh, this should also get satisfied for the same. So. We rewrite this uh, uh, inequality one again, but now we are changing those uh, those things. So here we have made that substitution, this substitution and this uh, substitution has been made in these two places, right? And this inequality should get satisfied. Now we apply the, the second condition. We know that whenever uh, you are looking at this SIs and S minus Is and the corresponding theta Is and theta minus I, they should implement the, the same so the outcome should be the same as the social choice outcome as at those types so we can write that this uh, particular part here is nothing but f of theta i theta minus i tilde 
similarly this one will be f of theta i prime theta minus i tilde and now whatever you have is nothing but this and this is the definition of uh, uh, dsic so of course uh, the second condition is uh, trivially satisfied in this case because uh, you are essentially implementing the same social choice function uh, the the uh, the direct mechanism in that case is the decision rule is f itself all that we needed to satisfy is this condition here which is getting satisfied uh, as we have uh, shown here so we can conclude that uh, this function f is uh, dsic so the whole phenomenon can be shown by uh, by a, a schematic diagram here uh, we were initially looking at this uh, uh, this message spaces so remember this si theta i were living in capital m uh, s1 theta 1 was living in m1 similarly sn theta n was living in capital m n and so on so in this world we were uh, so even though players were having their own types the mechanism the indirect mechanism was not asking them to reveal their theta ones rather they were asking them to uh, uh, give the messages in this message space something like the purchase of uh, those uh, railway tickets of a certain class was their message that was being asked by the indirect mechanism not their type directly so this indirect mechanism was taking those messages and applying this uh, rule uh, of g and that g of s theta 1 uh, s 1 theta 1 to s n theta 1 was uh, given as an output now what we can equivalently look at in the in this uh, after we know this revelation principle is that uh, if you are looking at only those indirect mechanisms which are dsic then you can actually look at this dotted uh, box here so instead of looking at all these intricate details of this s1s and uh, m1s m2s you can uh, look at the direct mechanism theta 1 to theta n and uh, this uh, uh, social choice function f directly and ask these agents to re reveal their their types so they can report their types directly you apply this f on that and you can also find uh, that this uh, there exists a mechanism the direct mechanism which will also implement this in dominant strategy so uh, it is dominant strategy incentive compatible uh, if you have uh, a dominant strategy implementable uh, social choice function similarly you can talk about the bayesian extension so so far we have actually uh, spoken about only the uh, the types of others which can take any value so we were saying that no matter what the message has been chosen by the other players or the types that has been chosen by reported by the other players uh, the best response for this agent will be to report its type truthfully so that is exactly what is meant by this inequality here that agent i is picking its type theta i and the other players are uh, picking whatever they are trying to pick so this is this theta minus i was arbitrary this inequality gets satisfied for all theta minus i tilde and of course for all theta i's and also for all i's for all i's so uh, here in the bayesian extension we are weakening it a, a, a little bit uh, rather than looking at the the inequality being satisfied for all theta minus i tildes we are taking the expectation with respect to theta i theta minus i tilde given theta i once so this is something like the uh, interim game where agent i has observed its type and it is trying to predict what is the uh, type what could be the type of other agents and if it takes the expectation with respect to that then it is beneficial for uh, that agent to report its type truthfully so let us define it formally so we are going to assume that these types are generated from a common prior and this common prior is uh, a common knowledge you can see uh, much similarity with this with the uh, of this with the bayesian game so there also we had a common prior and that was also a common knowledge and this uh, uh, this type the type of a specific agent is revealed only to that respective agent so we are looking at this interim stage where the types are realized but only you see the ith component if you are player i and you cannot see the other uh, uh, types even though you have a probabilistic belief about those types so you can define this bayesian game uh, which has the same set of players the the message space is essentially taking the space uh, place of the actions you have this uh, original types capital theta i's 
now you have this common prior p and based on what type you are you have a uh, different normal form game and this message mapping remains as before so all the uh, uh, setup and notation remains as before you are mapping this uh, types into the message spaces now we can define um, the indirect mechanism m1 to mn comma g uh, to be implementing a social choice function in bayesian equilibrium in earlier case we were talking about dominant strategies now we have bayesian equilibrium everything remains the same in particular this part also remains the same the change that happens is earlier we were having in this case uh, we were having only m minus i tilde as well and we were uh, so this both these cases were m minus i tildes and we are getting this satisfied for all m minus i tildes rather now what what is going to happen is that we are taking this uh, this uh, quantity here that is player i is choosing this uh, its two true type is theta i and uh, it is uh, choosing this action or the strategy of si other players are choosing their own strategies and this is becoming a Bayesian equilibrium. So you are taking the expectation with respect to theta minus i given theta i. Once you have observed theta i, you have this belief. You take the expectation with respect to that belief. And once you take that, uh, reporting, uh, picking any other mechanism, any other message, mi uh, prime, is not beneficial for you. By, and you are uh, still looking at the expected utility when you have observed your own type. So this is uh, uh, quite naturally a little weaker than the previous definition. Of course, if the previous definition was true, that is some mechanism was dominant strategy implementable, that is definitely Bayesian implementable. You can do it as an exercise. So in, uh, if these con two conditions get satisfied, then we call this F to be Bayesian implementable via this uh, indirect mechanism M1 to Mn, G under this prior P. So of course, whenever we are talking about Bayesian uh, incentive, comp uh, Bayesian implementability, then we are also talking about this prior uh, because that is very crucial. Uh, we have just uh, mentioned that this result that if a social choice function is dominant strategy implementable, then uh, it is also Bayesian implementable. It, uh, it, it is very straightforward. Similarly to uh, the direct uh, mechanism in the in the previous case, we can say that the direct mechanism is Bayesian incentive compatible. Similar to the dominant strategy incentive compatibility, we have an equivalent uh, definition for Bayesian incentive compatibility and we use this acronym BIC for it. If the same thing happens that uh, for every theta i and theta i prime, notice that there is no theta minus i tilde anymore because this is expected over. Uh, so you have this utility here when you are taking the expected utility after observing your own type uh, That is going to be at least as much as uh, when whenever you are moving or reporting some other theta i prime in this case. So you are misreporting theta i prime that is not going to be any beneficial for you And uh, you can also state a very uh, similar result like the revelation principle for uh, DSICs or uh, DSI social choice functions. Uh, here it is Bayesian implementable social choice functions uh, that if the social choice function f is implementable uh, in Bayesian equilibrium then it is also BIC. So if you have an indirect mechanism which is uh, implemented in uh, Bayesian equilibrium then uh, there must exist another the direct mechanism which is also uh, Bayesian incentive compatible. So that essentially uh, demystifies the fact that uh, we don't really need to look at uh, if you are looking at uh, only incentive compatibilities, uh, either Bayesian or dominant strategy, you can rule out the indirect mechanisms altogether. You can only, without loss of generality, look at the uh, incentive compatible mechanisms or the direct mechanisms. And the proof is very similar to DSI. I recommend that you follow the same steps. The only difference will happen uh, is in the case where we are writing for all m minus i tildes. Here it will be expectations, and that expectation has to be taken care of carefully. But the steps are fairly straightforward. So even though we have only uh, defined all these results in terms of cardinal preferences, you can also think of a very similar setup where these are all um, uh, ordinal preferences, and you can define. Uh, all this uh, dominant strategy 
implementation and domain strategy incentive compatibility and similarly the Bayesian versions of it uh, in the similar way and the corresponding um, the revelation principle will also hold for those ordinal preferences and that I also leave as an exercise.